Hey, it's Mike here, and today I'm ready to stab myself in the name of science. I have my little blood glucose monitoring test kit, and I'm gonna go ahead and do my first test. It's first thing in the morning. I'm fasting, technically. I haven't eaten anything yet today, and so I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up. It's by Care Touch. It was just kind of like a cheaper one on Amazon, and it says no coding. Some people, I think, were concerned about like calibrating these things, but I believe that means you don't need to calibrate it. It's got 100 strips, so I'm gonna limit to 100 tests, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. The goal of this video is, of course, to figure out how my body responds to different things. How does brown rice compare to white rice? How about some refined sugar, refined sugar with berries, and so on. I'm just so curious. I'm always reading about this stuff, so I wanna see what happens with my body. Obviously, it's only a test of one. It's not any peer-reviewed research or anything like that. So let's give it a try. In case you're wondering, I am not a morning person. All right, let's open this up. So right away, this thing is, this is it. It's it's tiny. It's a tiny little thing. And we've got the case for it. It's like 10 times the size. These, I don't even know. I'm gonna have to read the directions on this. Someone out there is diabetic and is like, duh, I know what to do. Instructions, I should probably read those. Okay, here are the official test strips, two packs of 50. So I'll open these up. So here's the little pen thing. And by the way, I am not being sponsored at all for this. These might suck, although they did have good reviews. However, my Amazon account was once compromised and left a bunch of five-star reviews on stuff. So who knows, maybe they're fake. It was Amazon's choice though. I just took the wind chime down. I hope that didn't ruin the video up until this point. Okay, so this is the stabber or the lance. So you can lance yourself and this is the little meter itself. So I'm gonna learn how to use this thing. But of course I'm a YouTuber. I'm going to YouTube to look for instructions. But half the videos, despite typing care touch blood glucose monitor are keto people measuring their ketones. One more reason that diet's over the top. I need to check my blood sugar. The batteries were hiding in the pouch. Got to put those in. There we go. Here are the test strips. Very medical looking. Don't even, is this mic proof? There we go. That was easy. Just in there. Very interesting. It's almost like a little micro trip. <laughs> micro tripping. It's almost like a little micro chip. Has a little sort of insert on the side. Okay, so I just popped this little blue plasticky needle thing in. And then I guess I'm supposed to twist this off. And there it is, yeah, you can see the needle right there. Once you stab yourself and you're bleeding, you want your blood to touch that. So it's kind of crazy, but you just plug this in here and then it'll actually turn on. And then if it has the little red droplet, apparently it's ready to go. So that is ready to go. Oh my gosh, and now I get to stab myself. I have it on five out of 10, as in that's how deep it's gonna stab me. So I'm just gonna go for it right now. Oh, no, the tiny bit of blood, no, oh, yeah. Uh, I have really thick calluses, I think. Okay, so I just tried it twice and didn't get enough blood. Apparently my calluses are pretty beastly, probably from working on the tiny house, doing construction. Uh, so I'm gonna try it again really quickly. I cranked up the dial to seven. You gotta disinfect the area. I'm gonna go on uh, maybe one of my less calloused fingers. Okay, we got a little bit of blood right there. Oh, no. It's like my blood clot. Oh, there we go, getting a good drop. Just gotta squeeze the crap out of it. That's the key. Just plug this guy back in. That's my blood spot right there. And uh, just going for it. I think I just kind of dab it down. Oh yeah, come on. what I do for you guys? Five, four, three, two, one. 68. I'm technically dead right now. No, I'm, that's fine. Remember, um, Dr. Sean Baker's was about, about twice that fasting. And the number 68 is a little bit low. Some sources say 70 to 100 is the normal fasting range. Others say 80 to 100. And I think that might be because I actually haven't eaten for like 16 hours. And because I've been filming this video, I've gone about over an hour past when I normally eat. And it's not like dangerously low. They say that below 50 is, is too low. Now I'm gonna be like a drug addict with all my used needles. And I'm gonna go ahead and make my normal breakfast and see how I respond. I'm gonna do a 30 minute measurement and then a 60 minute measurement. <laughs> and then maybe a 120 just to see. All right, so slight change in plans. I actually ran out of steel cut oats, which happens very rarely. So I am doing an Ezekiel bowl, but I've got some fresh mangoes, some blueberries and an apple and some cinnamon on there. And actually foragers, cashew yogurt, plain yogurt. So I just finished my meal and I have a timer set for 30 minutes. And the 30 minute test might be a little redundant. We're really looking for the 60 minute peak. 
And if it's over 175, that is probably bad. That's kind of gets up into the diabetic range around 200 or over 200. And then I also wanna see if I'm getting a hypoglycemic dip at around two hours. If you eat a lot of refined sugar, you can end up getting that and then your body thinks it's starving and then it floods itself with triglycerides. Not a good response. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes since I last ate. I'm gonna do another test. I'm guessing it's gonna be maybe around 100, maybe up to 120, sort of halfway up to that peak. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stab myself again real quick right here. Ah, wrong button thing. Ooh, that was a good one. But it's like not bleeding at all. Come on, bleed more. Oh, I gotta stab myself again. Blood dot is ready. Come on, please. Don't wanna stab myself again. Oh no, I spread it out too much. Come on, it's like soaked in blood. You're the worst right now. Care more, care touch. I don't know, there has to be some technique I'm not doing. Error? Error four, stab yourself again. Okay, so I just destroyed two test strips with no result. And I think the problem is I was taking the blood and just splotting it on the thing when you're supposed to sort of just gently put the little strip up against it and let it sort of suck blood in. So diabetes is hard. <laughs> All right, two, one, the result is 109. I was right in the, in the guessing range right there. Success. All right, so it's been an hour since I ate. My best guess for the number is probably gonna be like maybe 150-ish, maybe a little bit higher. We'll see. So I got my technique totally down now. I need hardly any blood, so it's gonna be not very painful. I actually stabbed myself on nine one of the times I realized, and that's why it hurt a little bit more. But I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my pinky this time. Okay, and let's see what we get here. Five, four, three, two, one. 99, it already went back down. And I'm guessing that might be because I didn't actually eat a ton of food. I normally eat more, but it's cool to know that it's going down. If I had to guess, I was getting that faster initial rise from the fruit, and then since there wasn't actually that much cereal in there, I ran out. It wasn't as much as I normally eat, and so it probably just didn't rise that much. But I'm, I'm hungry now, I'm gonna go eat lunch. All right, so I ate some Ethiopian food for lunch. I even had a carrot juice on the side, which I thought would spike my blood sugar 30 minutes later. I am at 94, which is lower than my breakfast, which had a decent amount of fruit in it. My goal is to make sure that I'm never spiking my blood sugar too intensely because that's just not good for you and it can sort of age you, things like that. And so, good news so far. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a 60 minute test and see where I'm at. So 30 minutes after I was at 94 and then 60 minutes after I was at 137, which is definitely a normal blood sugar response. If I was diabetic, I might be up closer to 200 after a meal at an hour. So it's looking pretty good, but then it actually went down at about 90 minutes down to 116, but then I kept monitoring it and I got another little subtle spike at the end. So I think what was happening is I was getting the simple sugars from the carrot juice and maybe some from the meal as well. And then over time it went down and then it started peaking as those starches started digesting. Who knows for sure? And then it went down and then at five hours it was down at around 110 and it's probably gonna keep going down, but I'm gonna eat again soon, so I'm not gonna just starve myself to see what happens. I'm really curious to see if I do like a 100% whole food vegan meal, see where I get, see if I get the same blood sugar response. And then once I figure that out, I wanna try experimenting with some super sugary, some more processed meals, see how much I spike then, and yeah. I wanna see if there are crappy enough vegan foods that I can spike myself up around 200. We'll see, we'll see. So a quick update on Mike's blood sugar adventures. For dinner, I decided to just experiment by eating an entire sort of junky vegan pizza. It wasn't even cheese on it, but it was entire pizza with white flour and probably sugar in the sauce. It had veggies on it and stuff like that. And that got me up to like 160. Yesterday, I was quite low in my fasting blood sugar in the morning. But today, after eating that whole pizza, I woke up with a 110, which is a whole, what, 40 points higher than I was the day before. And today I'm trying to just eat my normal sort of whole food vegan meal. So I went and did a big bowl of oatmeal and I had just a really brief rise to about 130. And then by an hour, it was already back down to 110, which is pretty crazy. And I'm guessing that was from things like blueberries and cinnamon in there that blunt blood sugar responses. And so I'm gonna go ahead and eat a super healthy whole food vegan meal with veggies and brown rice and beans and stuff like that and see what happens. Okay, this is my lunch that is brown rice and a bunch of veggies and stuff. And this is a salad with beans and a turmeric dressing. 
Okay, so I've been tracking my response to that lunch, which was a pretty large lunch. And interestingly, at 30 minutes, I was still pretty low. At 60 minutes, I was only at 130, but then at 90 minutes, it's like the starch kind of kicked in and I went up to 160 and then down from there. I think what I'm gathering from this meal and the pizza meal I had is that when I'm eating a meal of up around 1,000 calories, I tend to go up toward 150 or 160, but if I'm eating a smaller meal like breakfast at maybe 700, 600 calories, then I'm not gonna go up very much at all. So based off that Ethiopian meal that I had yesterday, I sort of thought it might be normal for me to only go up to 130 after a meal, but I actually didn't get enough food to eat at that meal, which happens at restaurants a lot. And so perhaps 150 is more normal. That is a normal response. As long as I'm not going over 200, I'm not diabetic. However, I do wanna experiment with spices and things like that and see if I can eat a massive meal and maybe stay under 150 if that's possible. Maybe I should just throw blueberries in my lunch because I know they help with blood sugar. Who knows? Experiment continues. All right, another update, I just woke up and I'm realizing some trends. One is last night I went and met with some friends and we ate some noodles and it was kind of later and I also ate that pizza meal later and, and when I eat a late dinner, I tend to wake up the next day with about a 110 fasting glucose. So it's probably not a good idea to eat like at nine or later, which is what I've somehow ended up doing those two days. But now it's time to really start experimenting. So hello, Freely the Banana Girl. I'm gonna only eat about maybe five or six bananas because I wanna see what happens and I wanna compare it to my oatmeal meal which is about 600-ish calories and doesn't spike my blood sugar like at all which is amazing. And so I'm gonna go ahead and eat these right now and see what happens. Get it? I feel like fruitarian people are gonna be like, that's nothing, you gotta eat at least 10 in one sitting. Well, that's enough for me. We'll see what happens to my blood sugar now. Also want to add that I've gotten to the point where I can so easily get the slightest amount of blood and then catch it on the end, which is really, you're just trying to get a little bit of capillary action on the end of that strip. But I'm starting to get like little dots on my hands. See that from taking like, I've probably taken like 20 samples now. So I think I'm gonna switch hands. So after those bananas, as you can see by this chart, there is basically no blood sugar spike. However, I was really hungry after eating that and that was like five bananas, 500 or 600 calories. And yeah, people would say you need to eat more, but I don't need to eat more when I'm eating those starch-based foods like oatmeal. I said I wanted to experiment. I'm actually gonna have this bowl of, of kitchery, which is rice and lentils and a bunch of veggies, and I threw some blueberries in it. And to compare that to a very similar meal without the blueberries, the blueberry meal didn't spike quite as high, and then it petered off a little bit earlier. But notice how low it started. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. All right, it's another day, it's a really hot day, and my theory might be correct that if you eat dinner late, you're gonna have higher fasting blood glucose in the morning. I ate not quite as late last night, and I was at 100 instead of 110. I still don't know how I was at 68 that one morning. And yes, if it's been kind of a confusing reading, I've done it twice, and so far it's always been within a couple points of the first reading. But I realized something really weird happened yesterday with the bananas, and that was when I went to eat my next meal, at 30 minutes, I was down to 86. I was down in fasting, and that would indicate that I had a sugar spike and a crash, and it's possible that I had a sugar spike from eating the bananas, and I just didn't see it, and then I had a crash, and I picked up the crash, so I wanna really make sure that's not what's happening. So, so I'm going to eat five bananas again and be really careful to keep on tracking it over to two hours and just make sure that it wasn't a spike and crash situation. So I actually know what's going on. Couple more points I wanna mention. First of all, bananas aren't even really high GI foods. I guess as they get riper and riper, they get more simple sugars. So the more spots, the more simple sugars, so the higher GI they technically would be, and that's glycemic index. All right, so I don't know what happened yesterday, how I missed this yesterday, how my blood sugar wasn't higher. I don't know what's going on, but 30 minutes after those bananas, I am at 204 today. And that is crazy. You know, I was gonna joke that I should eat a bunch of junk food, some cookies and stuff to try and at least get over 200 at some point during this video, but I did it with only five bananas. And I remember doing the sort of fruity stuff for a while <laughs> and I would eat probably more than that for breakfast. And there's a reason I only did it for probably like a week because I did not feel good and that's why. And this is funny, I never get headaches or anything and maybe this is in my head, but I almost feel like a little pressure on the back of my head. Maybe it's literally in my head, I don't know. And there I was like five minutes ago thinking about how bananas are low GI foods. <laughs> News flash, crazy hair flash. 
All right, so I've got a couple more blood sugar experiments for you guys. One of them was kind of a fail. I woke up this morning and I was like, hmm, I wonder what would happen to my blood sugar if I just skipped breakfast. I hardly ever skip meals and I really don't like to, but I figured, hey, let's just see what happens. And so I went and fasted a couple more hours and my blood sugar was still at like 95. So I don't know how long I would really need to fast to see a result and I don't feel like starving myself all day but at least I know I don't instantly crash when I miss a single meal. <laughs> and for my second experiment, I know that some of you are probably familiar with Amla, Amla powder. It's in a lot of Dr. Greger's videos. It has some of the highest antioxidants of any food ever measured. And there's studies like this one from India that claim that it is effective at lowering blood glucose in patients. And it's so nasty though, that you can't really just take it straight. So I actually have it in pill form here. And so I'm gonna try taking it with a meal and just seeing if it has some crazy effect on my blood sugar. Probably won't, probably have to take it for like a lot of days and get not that huge of an effect, but why not? At this point, it's pretty clear that I can react pretty differently to the same meal, or it seems so. Maybe with that banana meal, I just missed a really quick spike, I'm not sure. But the one meal that sticks out to me was the Ethiopian meal that I had with carrot juice, and I had a really low blood sugar spike to that, and so, I'm gonna go ahead and eat that same meal again today just so I can get a little bit of sort of experimental repetition. I would really need months to repeat everything and try everything over and over again in different combinations to get really good idea of what's going on with my blood sugar, but at least I'll get a little bit of an idea. And finally, the results of that repeat Ethiopian meal plus Amla, super amazing. Again, I just went up to around 129 at 90 minutes and it started going back down from there so it looks like it's a super either healthy meal with a lot of lentils and things like that that would prevent a blood sugar spike but the problem is i don't know if the omelet actually made a difference because it was such a non-spiking meal in the beginning all right, in the end, this video may have raised more questions than it answered. You definitely cannot get super reliable scientific answers from just measuring your own blood sugar. I thought I might make some more clear-cut discoveries. The banana thing really surprised me. I didn't think it was gonna go quite that high. But other than that, just the idea that eating whole plant foods and whole starches is better than eating these refined ones, and especially eating late at night is not good. I would not think that it would affect my blood sugar the next day, but it clearly does. I think it does. And in terms of those bananas, I do think it's very possible that I missed a really quick spike. If you look at this plotting that someone did of their blood sugar after eating some sugary stuff, you can see that that blood sugar spike could have easily been missed. Okay, so if you guys did find this interesting, let me know down below of some foods that you would like to see me respond to or like to see my blood sugar respond to. Response video. Okay, that's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.